Now let's explore close reading, specifically teaching students to closely read complex text. Here are our learning targets. One, I can define the close reading process. Two, I can actually close read for word choice and text evidence. And three, I can discuss applications for using close reading in my academic discipline. The result of reading closely allows students to identify the author's central ideas and describe the significance of those ideas, as well as find supporting details in the text and explain uh, how these serve as substantiating evidence. Rather than using classroom reading time to discuss students' prior knowledge or relevant information or reinforce students' existing misconceptions, let's learn how to go about engaging in this type of reading and making sure the reader fully attends to the reading act, the act of reading in our classes. Lapp et al. in uh, 2012 declared that to make inferences while reading, readers must understand the language of the passage and then use context clues to support an even more precise understanding of the intent of the passage. To promote deepening interpretations of the passage, students must be able to apply related background knowledge to support conclusions, eliminate ambiguity, enable visualizing, fill in informational gaps, predict, draw conclusions, and form logical opinions, all while assessing the strength of performance and developing stances. Students must be able to deeply comprehend messages and the message of the text, and depending on the text complexity, they might need often to reread it multiple times in order to more deeply infer the information or the message. Additionally, close reading of text can occur multiple times and at many times during instruction. Students are asked to return to informational passages multiple times for deeper and deeper analysis, which the teachers will assess by their responses based on text-based questions. The primary purpose here is to support students learning to critically analyze text-based information. Now, students need opportunities to independently attempt initial readings of text passage to see what they can take away from it. From this initial assessment, teachers can design instruction, whether that's whole group, small group, or individualized. Uh, they ought to plan what they want to model and what readers can do to improve. And text used for this informational uh, scaffolding should be, well, increasingly more complex. And it should require deeper and deeper analysis of such things as theme, topic, issue, or message. It's important to provide students with multiple resources that allow them to dig deeper in terms of the content. Now this mimics what experts do, what we do, uh, as we form our opinions, make judgments, or even write about a topic. Doctors, for example, read multiple articles about new surgical procedures and whether or not they might use them. Historians peruse, well, numerous related documents when writing about major historical events. In Techniques for Close Reading, Brumet in 2010 defined close reading as the mindful discipline reading of an object, that is, text, with a view to deeper understanding of its meaning. Cummins in 2013 described close reading as that which results when the reader analyzes any given text at the word or phrase level and also the paragraph and section level. As the reader analyzes the text, he or she determines which details are most important and how these fit together logically to convey the author's central idea or themes. As a result of the close reading, the reader begins to critically evaluate these ideas or themes. When a student engages in close reading, he or she analyzes the text at the word or phrase level and the sentence and paragraph levels. By considering the weight of meaning of particular phrases or sentences in a section of text, the student can then begin to see how important details fit together to support the author's central idea in a section of text or the whole text. According to Cummins, these are essential skills for our students to cultivate in a world where they are constantly bombarded with information that they actually need to understand in order to be active participants in a society. Shanahan briefly described the essentials of close reading for example, intense emphasis on text, figuring out the text by thinking about the words and ideas in the text, uh, minimization of external explanations, multiple and dynamic reading, multiple purposes that focus on what a text says, how it says it, and what it means, or even what its value is. This fosters teacher thought about some key issues on close reading, actually. Close reading requires a substantial emphasis on readers actually figuring out a high quality text. Now this is accomplished primarily by reading and discussing that text. And as challenging texts do actually not concede their meanings well easily, we have to reread them. The first reading is actually an issue of reading comprehension. We think about who did what, who did what, who, what, where, when, why, how on that first reading. 
students ought to be able to, well, trace the plot or answer key ideas, detail questions from a given chapter. The second reading focuses on how the text works. How's it organized? What literary devices were used? How effective were they? What's the quality of the evidence? If data were presented, how was that done? Uh, why did the author choose this word or that word? And was the meaning of a key term consistent or actually did it change across a text? Note that the second reading might be a complete rereading or just a reading of a subsection that is targeted due to certain components it contains. Now the third reading focuses on what the text means. This might include author's point, uh, text to text, text to self, text to world connections, and an evaluation of the work's quality. When students deeply understand what a text says and how it works and what it means, they are then well positioned to critically evaluate it. Close reading requires readers to understand what the text says, how it works, and what it means, as we've just noted. It demands making connections with other texts and exploring a text's value or quality. However, this doesn't require readers to know and understand every fact in a text. <laughs> the key is to ask questions that are not only text dependent, but that guide a reader to accomplish the interpretive goals. To do that, the questions need to emphasize, well, what's important in the universe of the text. Shanahan 2013 explained that close reading places the meaning in the text itself. That's important to us because the author's intentions aren't what readers should be probing. Rather, the author's words are the focus. An example would be in examinations of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. We could note uh, in a close reading that the word dedicate and its meaning occurs six times across the course of the text. And we might choose to look at why did he repeat these words in the way that he did, at the time that he did, and for what impact. Also important is close reading's emphasis on self-reliance and its bounded nature. As Shanahan claimed, all you need is the student, the book, and the teacher. That's sufficient. As to how would you describe close reading, Fisher uh, responded by saying, it's a careful and purposeful rereading of a text. It's an encounter with the text where students really focus on what the author had to say and what the author's purpose was, what the words mean, and what the structure of the text tells us. Uh, this is actually what Rosenblatt described in her reader response theory, that reading is a transaction between the reader and the text. It's an effortful act to understand what the author had to say and not really impugning those author's words, but really getting into what the author had to say and bringing up some of your own ideas and bringing your own ideas to bear on that text. Fisher added, now in close reading, we have to have students reread the text. We give them questions, yes, text-dependent questions that require they go back into the text and search for the answers. But these aren't simply recall questions, you know, not just the facts of the text, but rather questions that allow students to think about the text. Think about the author's purpose, the structure, and the flow of the text. Essentially, close reading requires that students actually think and understand what they're reading. Fisher and Fry in 2013 defined close reading as a form of guided instruction in which the teacher's questions and prompts and cues help the learner. It's part of the gradual release of responsibility, actually. It's not a comprehensive instructional effort. The first step, honestly, is to choose a text that is complex, challenging, you know, worthy of scrutiny. Now, no need to jump into 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea or Pride and Prejudice, both excellent texts, but let's just ensure that the selected text actually requires repeated readings and allows for deep discussions to ensure understanding. One key skill for students to develop is annotation, the underlining of key ideas, circling of words and phrases that are confusing, and writing questions or reactions in the margins. Annotations help students develop a deeper understanding of the text and to really marshal up some evidence for three types of activity. Uh, one, text-dependent questions. It invites students back into the text to look for evidence uh, to consider something new and in a different way. Questions might elicit understanding of key idea and details, text structure, author's purpose, uh, the comparison of two texts or vocabulary. Discussion with classmates <laughs> is an important opportunity for students. It, it helps them express themselves clearly, make claims, provide evidence, and see the text from a wider variety of perspectives. 
Also, follow-up tasks. Hey, let's draw on key information in the text and insights from peers. Here are a few important insights to wrap up our attempt to define close reading. Note that in close reading, there is a distinct need to analyze and scaffold textually-based inferences, which are at the heart of meaning construction for learners of all ages. That simply reading a text multiple times and asking more questions will really do little to help students who are already struggling with challenging texts. As well, close reading assumes different forms within different disciplines. Now, we've seen this table before. It is a reminder of the processes characteristic of proficient readers. Now, as readers, we examine relevant information. We think about what it might mean. We determine our understanding. Uh, we act and think and act accordingly. The processes listed here, as we know, they're referred to as reading strategies, but these are really the conscious, flexible, and, well, nonlinear application, right? That circuitous mess in your head of how we move back and forth between who, what, where, when, why, determining what's important and creating images and doing it all over again. We glean the essence of a text. We organize this into a coherent summary. And in order to comprehend, we check constantly to see if our understanding is moving forward as we use these processes to make sense of the world around us. According to Fisher and Fry in 2012, close reading doesn't mean you simply distribute a complex reading and then exhort students to read it again and again and again and again and again until they understand it. No. Instead of thinking of close reading as something that is done to a class, you know, like what we do to them, <laughs> um, let's view close reading as something we teach students to do. This is important. It's a mindset shift. Uh, it allows our investigation into close reading to consider the powerful practice of reading through lenses. And reading through lenses will help us find patterns, and ultimately finding patterns will help us develop a deeper understanding of the text and what the text might have to say to us. Here is a template uh, from the work of Lehman and Roberts in 2014 that provides a protocol for using lenses and patterns to read closely for text evidence, both in narrative and informational text. Lehman and Roberts, 2014, also provided a protocol for using lenses and patterns to read closely for word choice in both narrative and informational text, as you can see here. Now here's one more sample Lehman and Roberts 2014 work. It provides a protocol for using lenses and patterns to integrate knowledge and ideas with narrative and informational text. Alrighty then, let's try it out. Let's tackle a text through the lens of word choice and see where that leads to our understanding of it. And the following slide is an excerpt from Priscilla and the Wimps by Richard Peck. Read it through this first time to determine what's happening, what seems important, you know, what images are you creating in your mind? So please read through this excerpt from Priscilla and the Wimps with these first reading questions in mind. Well, I used to think that if I read a text, highlighted it, annotated, wrote in the margins, then I was close reading. Hmm, not exactly. As Lehman and Roberts pointed out, we are, well, we're not just reading for close reading's sake. Instead, we're going to use this as a process, and this process will be a tool for our thinking about the text we're reading. 
So let's read through the lens of word choice. More specifically, let's look for words that seem specific and purposefully chosen by the author that evoke strong emotions or images. And let's select those. Don't settle for jumping around and simply discussing random words you notice in the text. Rather, zoom in. Start looking for patterns. Start to see if the words the author chose fit together in some way. As Lehman and Roberts 2014 noted, our first step is to look back at the word list we made and look for groups. Are there ways these words fit together? This is an important point. Do not look for the meanings of words. If I were to talk about meaning, I might say about some list, all these words have to do with being sick, being active. That's kind of obvious, right? So instead, study the words you've listed and start by looking for patterns of, oh, tone or feelings the words give you. Are there words that are, I don't know, silly, scary, sad, adventurous, humble? And work with your group for your selections. Again, which words fit together? Then. Determine a label for each group. Strongly consider, in this case, the use of concepts or abstract nouns to represent them. You might also employ verbs or adjectives or the like. Here are some sentence frames that students might use to elaborate on their thinking. This thinking is about which words fit together and how they fit together. Now let's move to the next step where we use patterns to develop a deeper understanding of the text. Consider exploring the purpose, mood, central ideas, symbols, or theme. Here are some sentence frames that might be of use to reflect on text evidence and meaning. Now let's take a metacognitive moment, shall we? When did you find yourself asking and answering questions? Making inferences? Determining what's important? Summarizing. When did you find yourselves synthesizing or creating mental or graphic images? Why did you do what you did? How many times did you read the selection? How many times did you find yourself citing evidence from the text? All right, now here's an example of one student's selection of strong words and images during the second reading of the text. And here's one means by which students might organize their word choice to support their close reading through lenses. Here's an example of one student's selection of which words and images fit together. And now here's an example of one student's selection of using patterns to develop deeper understanding of the text. Here's another student uh, and the example of which words and images fit together. And here's that same student's example of patterns that develop deeper understanding of the text. And finally, let's consider some disciplinary uh, considerations and applications for close reading in your discipline. Here's some important questions to ask, right? How do I determine whether a text is worthy of a close reading? Well, ask some of these. Will students find it interesting? Does the article or the text compel at, uh, students to ask questions or discover new understandings? Is it a quality piece? Does it include rich vocabulary? Could I, as the teacher, brainstorm quality text-dependent or essential questions? 
Can I extend the learning beyond the text to, let's say, debate or evidence-based discussion? As we recall, that's so important. And as Appleby reported, uh, open discussion is one of the most significant variables related to high and higher end-of-year literacy testing results. As well, Camille in 2008 noted that discussion rests on the idea that students can and will internalize the thinking processes that they experience repeatedly during discussion. How might you use close reading in your discipline? And through which lenses might that be most profitable? <laughs>